welcome to edgeofcode.com series of infinite roller tutorials. If you prefer a written version of the tutorial, you can find one at edgeofcode.com. So in the previous tutorial, we continued using blocks to create the train and added to the menu so that we could play chunks or blocks. Today we'll make the buttons play the appropriate game and display a separate high score for each type of game. So open your infinite roller project in the scene. First, we're gonna make the buttons do what we want them to do. Open the game controller script and create a new method that takes the terrain type as a parameter. So it's going to be public because we're going to want to recall it from the menu manager script when we press the button. Um, and it's going to be void and let's call it set current terrain type generator and pass in the variable of type terrain type, which is this enum that we created last time. And this will set the current terrain generator variable. We need to be able to deactivate and activate the appropriate terrain generator. To do this, let's create a method in the abstract terrain generator script. We want to do it in there because whichever one of these the current terrain generator is, it will use the same code to deactivate or reactivate it. So open abstract terrain generator and create a new method. It has to be public so that we can access it from the other script, void and call it activate. And we'll pass the bool variable in called activate, which we'll use to set it active or not. So unlike this restart method, the code is the same for both subclasses, so we don't need to use an abstract method. SetActive either activates or deactivates the game object, dependent on what's passed through. So save this script and go back to the game controller. And then let's add to set current terrain generator. First, we want to deactivate the existing one. So that would be current terrain generator dot activate and pass in false. Next we want to set the current terrain generator. So if the terrain type that we've passed in is um, the chunks terrain type. Then we want to set current terrain generator to be the chunk one. If it's the blocks, then set it to be the block one. Once that's set, we want to activate the new terrain generator and restart it. So we want to call the current terrain generator dot activate again. And this time pass in true. And then restart. Save the script and open menu manager next. And the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a reference to the game controller class. So add the variable, save the script, and then go back to Unity so that we can assign it. So main menu game object, 
and then there should be a game controller slot. So just drag it in. Now we need to call the set terrain generator method that we just created from each of the play game methods. Um, remember these are the methods that the menu buttons call when they are pressed. Before we toggle the menu, add game controller dot set current terrain generator and for the chunks button we want to pass in game controller dot terrain type dot chunks in the blocks one we want to pass through the blocks one instead save the script and go back to unity Select the block terrain generator and click this button at the top left of the inspector. This means that it's deactivated now. So if you look in the hierarchy, it's a slightly darker grey. This means that it's deactivated at the beginning and I want to deactivate both of the terrain generators. This will allow the set current terrain generator method to work correctly. Um, okay, we've got an error. Game controller terrain type doesn't contain a definition for block. That's because it's blocks. I missed the S at the end. Okay, let's check to make sure it works now. If I click on chunks, I get the chunks one. Ooh. And if I click on blocks, I get the blocks one. But at the moment, we don't generate any extra blocks. So that, that works. At the moment though, the high score is the same for both games. We're going to fix that now so that the high score for the block game is separate from the high score from the chunk game. So open the high score setter and first we need to comment out these two lines in a wake because we're going to set this differently. Create a new method. Um, public because we're going to call it from the menu manager again. Uh, void and call it new game. And again, it's going to have a parameter of terrain type. So that we can have a different key for each terrain type. So to start with, we'll set the high score key to be the scene name again but we'll add the terrain type onto the end so if terrain type is uh, the chunks one then we want to add chunks onto the end so do high score key plus equals which adds something to the end of this and then game controller dot terrain type dot chunks. Um, if it's blocks, then we want to do the same sort of thing, but we want to add blocks onto the end. Once we set the key, we want to set the high score text like we did before. So let's add that in. So the high score key is now the scene's name suffixed with either chunks or blocks. And set high score text gets the game's high score and displays it. So make sure you save the script and then go back to menu manager. And we're going to add another reference this time to high score setter. Uh, save the script and go back to Unity so that we can set that. Um, the high score setter is in the hood game object. And now, whenever we press a button, we want the high score setter to call new game and pass in the appropriate terrain type.
So make sure you've saved all your scripts and then go back to Unity. Okay, so press play. And one of the methods. And now the high score is zero. And once it's finished, it should set it to four. If I go to blocks now, the high score should be zero again, which it is. And it now has a, should have a high score of five. So if I go back to chunks now, it should still have one of four, which it does. So that's great, that works fine. Save the scene and the project. And next time we'll actually generate the random blocks for the terrain. Remember you can download the files for this tutorial at edgeofcode.com and I'll see you next time.